Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today I'm going to get some work done on a friend's EF Civic sedan. Now this car is his track car and it's solely a fun car. We had been talking over the past few months and he wanted to upgrade his, his suspension because he's on some, uh, some worn out and old, I think a couple of them are blown, Tokiko Blues with some Tien lowering springs which definitely not an ideal setup for running out of the track with us. And here's a look at those blues, not adjustable, same with the, the springs, can't do anything about height adjustment and they're a very soft setting. Now we've been talking about suspension setups for the last couple of months. He kind of wanted to replicate what I was using on my track car. I'm also using the Coney's and I now have upgraded springs. I was originally using 500 and 400 uh, when I first started going to the track. I've now went with 550 and 550, I just like the way it feels, I've gotten used to it and I'm not going to change it anytime soon, so I decided to sell in my old setup. I could always buy some in the future if I need them. These were just sitting around. So we're going to put this on his car, hoping to shave some time off of uh, his lap times. We're going to get these installed right now, go for a test spin. I'll give you a small walk around of his car, just kind of show you what it uh, has on it. And I think these are kind of like the last remaining pieces he needs to at least have it a little bit more competitive. And just some wider wheels and tires. The LS stocks really aren't an ideal wheel for the track. I remember, what are these, six? 15 by sixes? Yeah, that's correct, 15 by six. And then the 20550 is a nicer size tire, but the Dereza DZ102s, these are Dunlops, not really a, a great tire for the track. I believe it's have a 360 tread wear rating. I don't know if it's on here, but I believe that's what it was because I had a set of these. Uh, I still actually have a set of these on my NKCPS2 wheels, so. Once the shocks and coilovers change, new wheels and tires, I think this car will be a lot, a lot better handling and a little bit faster coming in and out of turns. And here's a look at one of these Tokikos after I got it off the car. Um, you can see a little Tien stamping on here, so we know these are a real soft spring. You know what, I want to test it. Let's... Yeah, the shock is done. It's not... There's no rebound whatsoever, it's staying shut, so obviously a blown shock, that definitely, that definitely is not helping. Abe, I also wanted to show you something that, you want me to kind of tell you if there's any problems? When I removed it, I had to just drop the shock with the top hat still installed. When whoever did your suspension last, I don't know if they over tightened this or they cross threaded it since it's hard to get to with this ultra racing bar. This one is now, it, it spins on the bottom of the top hat. And you can see in here, I'm going to put the ratchet on top. And maybe you can see it spinning. Hopefully you can. But that top hat, I don't know any other way to get it out. Luckily we don't need to because you already have the energy suspension bushings on the top and bottom of it so I'm just gonna feed the shock back up in here as I removed it so it'll still be fine but just keep that in mind for future if you're trying to get that top hat off you're gonna have to I don't know I, my guess would be to drill out this this portion of it because it's stuck in there. I don't know of another way to to really stop this from spinning because it's all flat here so I just wanted to let you know man that way when you see the video you know exactly what's going on with that top hat. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get one of these front ones put together. See the cups, the two different ones? These are the rears, these are the front. These actually don't go on like a cup. They're gonna go on, almost looks like they're upside down, but they're not because if you're using a stock spring, you'll notice how it fits lower here and it kind of wraps around. So that's the orientation of this particular cup. Um, the two coilovers that I have, if you have two that are different heights, the smaller ones always go on the front, larger ones always go on the rear. It just tends to be the way that those fit. And if you look at that, one thing that you're not gonna, that's not gonna be included, see how this moves around? I have a ton of these old washers from old coilover kits and everything. And these are great for putting on here if you can find one that's of appropriate size. Let me check. Yeah, perfect. What that does, that eliminates 
the coil over from moving around back and forth. So I'll put one on the base, and I'll put one towards the top of the sleeve just to alleviate any uh, additional movement in there. Granted, over time these may wear out, but it's gonna take a little while for them to, to fall apart. See, and with those little rubber washers on, this thing doesn't move at all. So that's exactly what you want. So if you can find something like that, maybe they sell these independently on eBay or somewhere. It'd be great to have if you're stalling a set of these or just for any shock, actually. So now I'm just gonna put it together. Um, follow your directions. You have a little plastic washer. So we're gonna go lower. I'm gonna cut um, this bottom piece off of the bump stop before I put it on. So that way it's not as tall. We wanna eliminate some of that. And then, there's two of these washers. These are for that stock, that little plastic, uh, it's not even plastic, it's like a part metal, part, part rubber sleeve that normally covers the shock. It's like a dust boot. One normally goes on the bottom of it, the boot, and then one on top. That's how the directions show. So we're just gonna use one for the bump stop itself. And then the other one we don't need to use because this one is gonna be the one that goes on the top of the top hat. And now the front's finished. I got both of them installed. And like I said, I was able to get the, the, the passenger side in just by feeding up through the bottom. So it's good to go. I did, however, when I was putting them together, I decided I wanted to flip these because that way we can go down. If we need to go down lower, we can. But, because you're never going to go to the top of the actual sleeve. So I thought it was smarter to reverse those. And now let's get those backs installed and let's take it for a spin. That way we can get it back here and try to level the car out a little bit, set the coils at a decent height, a little bit lower than it was before, but all evened out at all four corners. And here's a look at the rear, I wanna test it, just to check also. <laughs> yeah, there's no rebound on this particular shock also. I don't know about the, working on the passenger side, we'll get to the driver's side next. So I can only imagine how the car is gonna feel with the new suspension on there. It's gonna feel like a completely different vehicle. And after finishing them up, it looks like two of the shocks were blown. These two actually still have rebounds, so those two are still working. And if you're interested in the part numbers, these are the front shocks, these are the rear. Now after getting the car back on the ground, this rear corner, I'm having issues going any lower and I've already maxed out the coil. And there was still maybe like an inch of, of room. So what we're gonna do, these coils, if you look, see there's like a little cylinder on here? Um, not even a cylinder, I'm sorry, it's like a snap ring. You can move these out, and I'm gonna move it down another inch, just to give us more room, that way when it sits, it uh, adds an additional, I don't know, maybe three quarters inch of lowering right there at this particular corner. See, let me show you, see it has an opening. So what I did, I just kind of pried it off, and now I'm gonna keep working it around. I'm gonna slide it down to the lower mount. And here you can see I have it moved down to that lower position. It's now the color of, it's just silver in there because it was painted uh, with it set in the first spot. And if you look, there's even one that's higher. And that's what is nice also about these, these particular shocks. You can use one of three adjustment points when you have uh, your setup on there. And now I'm just gonna move to the driver's side. I'm gonna lower that one also because that one's pretty low on the sleeve. So I want to just be able to have a little bit of adjustment up and down on both sides so we can level the car out. All right guys, and there it is, we got it finished up. I set the height about 23 inches from the ground to each fender. So there might be need to be some adjustments made as the car settles a little bit. It looks like the rear may have settled a little bit more than the front, but overall, just driving over here, the car felt excellent. And one thing I really like, he was telling me about it. He has a Yonaka exhaust. It's from uh, the EF hatchback, but it's lengthened. They lengthened the piping um, right here. And then also on the B pipe, they had to lengthen it to fit, but that thing sounds really good with the B16 engine. I like the way that sounds. And I wasn't really on it heavily, just a little bit more spirited, but it sounds really, really nice with that engine. 
Let me give you a little tour of the car. This car is pretty much bare bones. He still has his door panels, not all the interior for the uppers, but dash is completely gutted. Heater core has been removed. Has an OBD1 conversion. It's really nice, energy hub, quick release. It's an 89 LX. Thing I like is that it doesn't have the, the power seat belt. It has the manual one, which is really nice. And he has all the rear seats and the trunk's also gutted. I really like these ultra racing bars. I'd seen these before. Never encountered them until I met this guy. He has the upper. Also, there's the rear lower bar and even the sway bar on the back. Then he also threw on the, the inside chassis bar. And then the front upper. This one's pretty cool too. It's a solid design all the way throughout. It has the cylinder here. And then the mounting bracket which surrounds the top hat. So really cool design. I like those. I like these full solid bars. I think they probably do a little bit better job than the ones that have joints on the end of it. But overall this is a really solid build. The car feels so much better with the suspension. I have it on fully stiff right now. I just want to see how it rides like that and it's still bearable but you can definitely tell it's super sporty. I think he's going to really like the way it feels. This uh, his B16 setup, OBD1, P30, ECU, Skunk 2, manifold, throttle body, 3 inch intake. He has a 4 to 1 header with the innovative bar. One thing I was looking at when he first brought the car over is you guys can see down in here. He has the innovative front mount, which mounts to the B-Series transmission and to the innovative bar. I really like that. I think I'm gonna do that on my car just to minimize any movement whatsoever because uh, innovative mounts, I don't know if you guys know this, they're known for starting to sag over periods of time and mine are only a 60, the 60A durometer, so they're not the stiffer ones. So it seems like mine are sagging a little bit and I don't know if that's, uh, maybe that can sometimes contribute to the car not getting into gear as easily. But I just want to get that and minimize it as well. And when he was over at the house we were talking about his radiator comparatively to my Yonaka. And you can see this one is a lot thinner in comparison. And look at the distance with his header. Yeah, like maybe like a three finger gap in there. And this is a... Uh, a little different style of header than mine so it's a lot more clearance on this and that's just because of the smaller size on that particular radiator but I like this Mishimoto one also it looks really nice the fitment is looks like spot on uh, as well that pretty much wraps it up for today guys hope you enjoyed the content and that Kony ground control combo if you can afford it I think it's one of the best you can go with I guarantee you you will not be disappointed with it Definitely a really, really nice combination. And the fact that you can switch spring rates around if you want to go something softer, say for instance that 350, 250, that would be great for a daily driver. Where this one, if you want to put it on uh, the hard setting and then take it to the track and then put it on soft and cruise it around, maybe not as a daily, might be a little too stiff for that. It's For me, honestly, it's still bearable because I've been driving these cars for so long and I'm so used to it. But really, really good setup. And I want to thank Abe for letting me work on his car and kind of get to check it out and look it over. It's always nice seeing purpose-built purpose, purpose -built cars. Those are my favorite. I know it's not the prettiest car out there, but I love them just as much because this one has one reason and one reason only, and that's definitely a great reason for me. It's fun to drive, sounds good, and hopefully he'll let me drive it at the track next time he comes out.